it's Topher, and today we're going to go do another Back to Basics of series. And today we're going to do the cube. And so what we have to know about with the cube is a little bit different than what we learned with the sphere. So with the cube, we have to think of about something called perspective. And perspective is, by definition, drawing on a surface to make it appear to have width, width and depth. Um, it's also a way of looking at it, a viewpoint. So, and we're going to be using both of those definitions, really. So a cube is not just a square. But it starts out that way. So if we draw our square, and it doesn't have to be a perfect square, because this is just sketching, rough sketching. If we want to correct our little areas here, we can do that as well. Okay. So to make this square start to actually look like a cube, we're going to do a one-point perspective. Now, as I said, it is all point of view. So if you're looking at this cube from above, your point of perspective is going to be somewhere up here. If you're looking from below, it'll be from down here. Make things dramatic. If you're looking at sort of from the side but above, we might want our viewpoint to be here. Wherever we choose to have our viewpoint is where, we, where our lines are going to converge in order to give it, give it depth. So let's decide, okay, we're going to give it a little bit of dramatic, and we're going to see what a cube looks like from this viewpoint. So if we take our ruler, and we go to the corners, and we're going to extend our cube all the way to that same viewpoint. Now, if it's a glass cube, of course, we're going to be seeing all of the four corners go into that viewpoint. Okay. Now, as we're looking at this, this already has depth because everything's going to that viewpoint. Now, let's cut it off and so we can make our cube. So what we're going to do is you, you do want to match your lines as far as what angle they're going at. So these are straight, so we're going to try to do just a straight line there, straight line there, okay, and this would be over to here, and down like that. So if we're looking at our glass cube, we'll see that all our points are going to the one point. And when we erase and we take off those guidelines, we see we actually have a cube or a box, roughly drawn. Okay, depending on how we're what we're drawing would also depend on what what are we seeing. Right here, it's kind of uh, just a, your glass box. Well, if we're looking inside an actual box. If this is the opening, we're not going to see this part here. Or if this is the opening, we're not going to see these lines here. So we can adjust that depending on what we're doing. Now if it's a block, okay, then we're not going to see any of those lines. We're just going to see the outside lines. So let's today think, okay, well, I'm drawing a block. Blocks are great to draw because we learn the technique of shading as far as if we're going to create something that is square-like, like a house 
or an apartment building, or um, a stack of books. So we can see that this is a foundation for what we're going to do. Now that we have our block, we also have to decide in our world, okay, well, where's the light source coming from? The light source does not have to come from the same location as your point of view. So the light source can be from any other spot. So if we're thinking, well, our light source, little sun, is here. Though our viewpoint is here, all our shading is going to be radiated with our with our light source, not our point of view. So we're going to mark off where our highlight's going to be. Now our highlight is actually like right here on the corner. So this is going to be our brightest spot. Our darkest spot is going to be where the light doesn't shine. So it's actually going to be in this area here, which is our darkest spots. And over here, of course, our cast shadow. And we're going to follow our light source in order to figure that out. Which will be here in this area and right along here. Our midtones are going to be all along here. We could put a little bit of shading variation there. And we, of course, want our shading variation here. Okay. Now that we've kind of plotted out where our shading is going to be, we can then go, go towards shading. So starting at our dark... Let's just darken up our cast shadows. Now with here, all our shadows is going to come out in the same direction. So for cross hatching, we want all we want most of our lines to go out in that direction. If also we're bleeding um, with just the graphite, we're going to have start off at a darker section going towards our lighter section in the in this area. Same thing with this side. Now here, our dark area is going to start from the bottom and follow up that whole side of that box. With our lightest point being up here, closest to the, to the light source. Here, we're still going to have some shading. And it's going to come from our dark side to our light side. Same thing here. So knowing our cast, cast shadow is right underneath, darker tone, Midtone and light. Dark tone. Midtone and light. And when we're coming out.
again, it's going to be based on the light source. Now, boxes and cubes, same thing. You know, the only difference between a box and a cube is that one's longer than the other. So, if we're going, or, or a uh, rectangle type shape. So, the only difference here, so if we're doing more of a rectangular shaped cube, and our point of view, this time, and say is underneath, directly underneath. All our points are going to again go to our viewpoint. since we're this is not a glass world everything's going that way now, if you look at this, it looks kind of weird that everything is going towards this single point that's below. Well, actually, this would be behind, okay? Because your larger is always going to be closer to you than your what's, what appears to be further away. So your larger box is your close-up, this part, okay, and everything's going to be receding backwards and uh, off into the distance. So this line, these lines we won't see. So let's take out our guidelines. So now we see what's in, what's closer to us because what's closer to us is going to be bigger. What's going to be further away is going to be smaller. And that's called foreshortening. Foreshortening is very important when you're when you're drawing characters or when you're looking at things that um, you want to give them a perspective. Okay? So, and if we're looking at from the at from the bottom this being closer to us makes sense. And we see that this here is going off into the distance. And then we can remove our guidelines. Now, Again, we have to decide where our light source is coming from. If our light source is coming from the bottom as well, this area is going to be your highlight area. This is going to be lighter. You're going to have your cast shadow is going to be opposite. So your darkest area is going to be on top and eventually getting lighter. And this is fun to play with because you can hear this may be if you're drawing your kitchen and it has a lights uh, a square light source on above it. This is 
you, the perspective that you want that you would be seeing. Now again, let's draw a different kind of cube, and we'll just do a really tall. And there is our. There's our rectangle, and we're all go we're going to use this as our viewpoint. Uh, say this is our horizon line, and we can put the viewpoint on the horizon line. But since it's going to be, say, it will be over in this area, we'll want everything to go to that same location. But, maybe it's just on a table, and our viewpoint is up here. So again, we're just going to follow it right to our point of view. If you put in all your corners first, it could also make, um, help you decide exactly how, how much depth to have for this and say you're drawing a cereal box on a table. Well, it doesn't, here's the table. Here's the top of the cereal box. And it comes down. Oh, and it's right on the corner of the table. Okay. Or, it's not on the corner of the table anymore. It's right in the middle of the table. Take away our guidelines. Okay, and since it's a cereal box, we wouldn't see this horizon line or our table line. And a lot of times, you know, we're in the kitchen. And our light source is directly overhead. Okay, so we know that the top of our box is going to be the lightest shade. And we're pretty much going to have the same shading going down. Cast shadow is going to be where the, the box will touch the table, in this case right along here, it will be darker here on the bottom than it will be on top. highlight area, say is right there. Here's our mid-tone area and our dark area down here. Again, mid-tone area and darker area. And since it's coming, the light source is directly overhead, we may not have much of a shadow on the surface. You know, so because this is just creating a shadow right around where it is. So, let's see. So maybe the shadow really is only very short. Okay. And drawing a cast shadow maybe enough just to give it that weight because we're not going to see very much of this shadow. This is going to be very, very dim shadow. Blending up.
from our dark area to our lighter area. You can do that with a smudge stick, which is preferred. Doing it with your finger, you leave oils on the on the graphite and it be, kind of looks dingy. So always try, if you have, to use a smudge stick or another piece of paper. Um, tissue works really well. Just help to blend that up. Now, now that we've learned how to do our cube, let's let's draw one. All right, let's go to a new clean sheet of paper. And we're going to be a little bit more precise here and actually use our ruler for starting off. Okay, so our cube. I'm going to say is right there. And as I said before, dramatic point of view or, pers or the perspective is more interesting if it's either from above or from below, and to one side or the other. So it, it allows your vision and the um, object to really appear solid. So if we're going to be looking at our item, which is sitting on an item like the horizon. And this is a flat, like a flat desert. And this is our horizon. And our point of view may be right on the horizon line, right there. Again, we're going to take all our points directly to that horizon and to our point of view, to our perspective point. So here, let's cut this off right there. So we're going to remove our guidelines. still keep our horizon line and keep an idea of where our point of view is. Is this something that we're going to be seeing? Is this an open box that we're looking into? Is it, again, a cube? Is it a stack of books? Well, we can't look through books, but we're going to be finding exactly what in it. So here we can take off these guidelines. We can take out our, our horizon line because we won't see it through the box or the, or the cube or what the stack of books or whatever we're looking at. Darken up my lines. going to be using. Okay. So here we have say our stack of stack of books. And we've got a thick book. Then maybe a little thin book. followed by medium-sized book and several tiny thin books followed by a 
thick book. You get the idea. Okay. And then we have a huge book on the bottom. So we also want to bring all these items to our point of view on her, uh, that we placed on the horizon line. If you're creating like a wooden slotted box, you would be doing this. Um, wood paneling, maybe. Um, a city street. Okay. So here we are. We're looking at our books. Now, books are not exactly going to be the same width, same height. You know, some are going to be a little shorter. Others are going to have their binding, and then the papers are going to kind of curve in. So we're going to want to decide how our books are going to look. So this book... These books are, let's say they're, they're about the same size. That book's about there. This book is a little longer. This book is fully long. This book is just really short. Now, we just added a little bit more definition to our drawing. made it a little bit more interesting just by changing how our boxes are or how our books are. Well, same thing here. Maybe this book only comes to here. This book comes to here. This book is the whole width. These ones got there. This one is it's, it's sort of like Jenga, a balancing act, because <laughs> we want to make sure that our base is solid, so our, you kind of think that, well, the books are really going to be fitting on, on themselves. Here we go. We're playing a balancing act with our book with our books. And okay. Now here, they're nicely all aligned or squared together, so they you have your books that are sitting on top of each other, but they're not going to look like they're going to be falling off. Okay, but we added a little bit more interest by varying exactly where they are in relationship to each other. Though we have them all nice and lined up right there. So here's where you could also have a little bit of fun. It's by now deciding, well, where's my light source going to be for this? Now, my light source, if it's coming from the front, then we're not going to see much shadow. But if it's coming from maybe the side or from above, these shapes are going to be very interesting as far as ca causing a shadow because we're going to want to kind of follow that um, coming on and making it shadow over. All right. 
So let's say our light source, I like the light source coming this way. Okay, that means right here, in this area is going to be our shadow. And if we're looking at, okay, so this is the shadow that's caused by this book. This book is a little bit smaller. We may want to adjust the shadow a little bit there. And, if, and it's a little bit further in, so shadow will come maybe here. Okay, these ones are further out. But they're still for that. And then we have an overhanging one. And this is going to overhang this way too. So by doing this, we're we're seeing where the light is going to actually create a shadow. And, and like our books, where we have the unperfect edge, our shadow is also going to be unperfect. Now, shadows, they elongate, they're, they're shortened, depending on the angle in which your light source is. So, you know, this may be where we're going to see most of our shadow. And well, we can adjust this. Oops. There is a much shorter one. And then we have Okay, so our shadow, of course, I always love to turn the page. It's not going to have as much defined edge as what our actual books are going to be. We're not going to see the individual lines of the box. But here we have the shadow that's being caused by the books. Our cast shadow being right there where the books touch our hard surface. Now we could now that we have this kind of plotted and we know, okay, well here's our light source and it's going to touch, this is going to be our light area here. This one, say, is underneath, so this one's going to be darker.
because here we go this book is sitting on top of it and keeping the light as much and we may have a just a touch of a highlight like right here okay this may have more of a highlight where these don't because again they're underneath this one's really underneath so maybe it doesn't have one at all and there's our highlight for that one So this is where we, by the use of our shading, we can make our boxes really interesting um, and really give them the depth that they want. Over here, since these are going to be all in shadow, well, to the You may not see as much detail on the on this end because it's a little blurred because of being in shadow. This book's underneath. This one's a little bit further out. These are underneath. This is. Really contrast that, put that underneath. Maybe there's another cast shadow right there. So we can see even just with simple shading from our light source how our objects are going to look. Playing with this, we can define the book itself and say give it there's the cover and here's the binding so and there's the other cover So these would be the pages. Um, if this wants to cover here, maybe the pages are over here. We can see the pages on this side because this is where it's going to say what kind of book it is, maybe. And this is the what we're looking at here is the spine of the book. Here again, we can look. We can, if this is our pages, well, pages don't always have, look like they have a defined edge. There we go. And maybe some are a little rattled. We can also do that. So all here is in the definite, is when you're creating and you're continuing with your work, so where do you want to put your detail? What kind of detail do you want to put in? What do you want to make it look like? Let's maybe round. It's a big book, so maybe it's a little bit more rounded. We can round our corners. Adding in the detail here will give your composition a little bit more enjoyment for the eye. 
But of course, this is your world. And if you want your world to be just a block and it being one color on each side, then this is your world. There's nothing saying that you can't do it. So I put a little bit more definition into um, my drawing. And as you can see, I have my stack of books um, on my table. And I have just laid out lightly where the, sh where the shadow is going to be. Um, it on a table, but we're only seeing part of the table. Of course, this is our world. We can do whatever we want. Now, I'm using a 0 0.5 right now. Just to give it some line. In my pages, I wasn't very specific. I just gave the hint of pages, as you can see there. Maybe the hint of writing. This is a big book, so you can actually see it well, maybe a little bit more clearly. We still have our little guide as far as the lighting. to give it some shadow. Okay. The other thing that's important is when you're working, especially with line art, um, the thicker the line, the more the weight. So you can take your lines where they're going to be a cast shadow Thicken up those lines. See these lines touch, so I could thicken those up. By thickening up lines, you're giving them more weight. Also, you can put thicker lines where there is more shadow. That'll also give them a little bit more weight. Thinning the line as, as you're going up. So here we're going to start our shadow. Um, we're going to follow our light line. I'm just going to give a hint of shadow under here. If you start from the dark and you lift your pen up, becomes a little lighter as you go. So see, we gave it a hint of a shadow between where our guidelines are. Further refining of this, we can add your lines. More of a brush tip. So as I'm going over it, I can bury my line weight.
And this type of shading is very prevalent in comics and other illustrative type art. You know, here is going to be the fun part. I'm going to go and I'm going to get um, my ink and we're going to give it a little bit of a wash. I'll show you what that is in just a second. So we're going to do something that's a little bit more dramatic. We're going to use some a wash of, um, we're going to use Indian ink. And um, so the this one is just uh, your standard ink, but I chose red because we're going to just give it a little bit more dimension and give it a little bit, maybe a little bit more um, interest. So straight ink, whether it's, you know, your black ink or if you want to use a red ink or a blue ink, when it comes out, it's going, that's going to be your thickest, your most concentrated color. You then want to maybe give it some light, light tones. So here I'm just going to add some water to my palette. And I'm going to put a few drops of the red ink right in there. And that's going to give it that wash in very light tone. So we have our three tones there of our red. So I like to use a thin brush, just so I can get some more detail. And starting off with our wash, our light colored wash, we can place in where we know our lightest colors are going to be. This is also where a nice larger brush is good, because you can quickly put in You just give it a wash. Hence the name. Of course, I'm putting some down, and you see I have my tissue here, and I'm just taking up the ends. As I put more down, it's going to build on it. Okay, so this. So even if you went over this and you used this very light wash, the more times you go over it, the darker those areas are going to be. I'm going to head towards my medium. By just using just a couple of tones, and giving it just the lightest of wash, created contrast and I've created a little interest. And I can continue to build this up to really put in those shadows. The more layers I do, the darker those areas are going to be. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. 
um, concentrating on these basics will help improve your art in the long run. These are, you know, for your sketchbook, for you to, to create, to build, and, and um, build upon. And each one of these will become more and more important as you're going on and you in your um, with your art and you're building up things and you're experimenting experiment with shadow experiment with shapes experiment with you know with different things use your imagination well until next time I hope you enjoyed if you liked it please give me a like or um, Remember, there's that um, notification icon that uh, will tell you when I have new content out. And please subscribe um, so we can enjoy more content, hopefully, like this. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now.